How's everybody doing? I wanted to talk about this Castle Serenity pellet stove. I'm going into my seventh season with this pellet stove and I ran into my first issue with it. I haven't had any issues before, but I, this, this summer, I always check it in the summer. I always make sure it's cleaned out in the summer. I test it in the summer, just in case there's a problem, I have time to fix it before the season starts. Well, I turned it on this summer. It dropped pellets, flame lit. It was getting going. And as soon as this, this heater started blowing, the pellets stopped, stopped dropping. And I was confused about that. And I, I didn't understand what was happening. Clearly the auger works. It's dropping pellets. Clearly it lights a flame. Clearly it's heating up. So what was the issue? Well, it turned out the issue was, is that I didn't clean out the exhaust pipe, the stove pipe that goes through the wall. It was a bird's nest in it. Okay. That is it, without the right kind of pressure. It's like negative pressure, I believe it's called. If, if it doesn't have any, it, if it can't exhaust, it automatically turns off the pellets. It's a safety thing. So that it doesn't keep it trying to exhaust into something that can't exhaust. And then the next thing you know, the entire freaking thing blows up and there's smoke and ash all over your house. <laughs> so it's a really good safety feature. I've never had this issue before. It, you know, it took six seasons for there to be a a bird's nest in there. I cleaned it out, everything. I vacuumed the whole pipe out. The pipe is not very, very long. It's, it's a very short pipe. Started it up again, and wouldn't you know it, it still did the same thing. And that really, really confused me because I knew I solved the problem. So I took the pellet stove out, brought it into the garage, opened it up, vacuumed the entire thing out, and I vacuumed the stove pipe exhaust part that's in here, I put the I put a I put a um, a shop vac all the way in there, sucked everything out of there, and that got it going. So I think probably there's it was caked up in there as well from just over time me trying to start it probably four or five times. It built a lot of ash up in there, and that jammed it up enough where it wasn't going to drop pellets. It's probably a very sensitive system. So once I cleaned it out, it worked. Turned out it was my fault. So this thing has been going now six seasons like a top, and we use it a lot. Now, I'm not sure if that's the, that's the reason it's been going so good, because we use it a lot. We use it probably eight months. I would say eight months out of the year, we got the pellets of going uh, more times than not, way more than not. Uh, we got it every, we, we got it going every single day starting November 1st all the way through April 1st at least because we get snow here in April all the time. So that could be why, but I also take good care of it. I also use really good pellets. Now, what is a really good pellet? If you hear people talk about that, what, you need to use good pellets. That doesn't mean like you need to use hardwood or softwood. To be honest with you, you should use softwood. But beyond that, don't use pellets where the wood is pressed together with glue, and that's how they make the pellet. You don't want that glue. That's bad news, that glue. Or cardboard, too. A lot of people use like a pellet that's wood and cardboard. You don't want to use cardboard. A lot of ash in cardboard. If you ever, have a, if you, if you ever start a wood stove with cardboard, you know how much ash, ash it produces. You don't want to mess with that. I used, a, I used for the longest time, I used a softwood pellet, completely and totally softwood. This one is a mixture now that I'm using softwood and hardwood. It's not as good as the softwood. The softwood is the best. If you get a pellet that is 100% softwood, it's better. It burns cleaner. It really is just, it's the top, top, top of the line pellet. Why is a softwood better than hardwood? It really doesn't make any sense, right? Well. In a pellet stove, they sell it by the pound. The bags are sold by the pound. They're 40 pound bags. Well, think about it. There's more BTUs in a softwood pellet bag than a hardwood. Why? Because there's more pellets in the softwood bag. A 40, right? If there's a million pellets in a hardwood bag, bag of 40 pounds, then there could be 1.1 million, right? To make up that 40 pounds because it's lighter. Softwood is better, it's more economical and, it, um, economical, and it burns cleaner. That's what I suggest. The next thing is, is that, what if you're, I mean, you're trying to decide between a wood stove and a pellet stove? In my opinion, there's only one person that should be using a wood stove, and that is somebody that doesn't have electricity. That's it. If you have like a hunting cabin or something like that, that's, 
that's really, that's really, there is one other person, probably. It says that if you've got a lot of property and a lot of wood on your property, and it's basically free, other than the gas you need and the chains that you need to use to cut it up, and maybe you've got to buy a, a wood splitter or something like that, or a sharpener for your axe, that's, that's pretty good as well. Even if, even if you have electricity, you're going to save some money, for sure. But, in all honesty, you're going to spend a lot of time it's cost you a lot of time. And if your time is worth money, then you want the pellet stove because you're gonna have to chop a lot of wood and you're gonna have to tend that fire all the time. If you're retired and you're using it to get some exercise, hey, that, that sounds good to me. But other than that, that's it. The pellet stove is so much easier to use. It's so much simpler. Every bag of pellets is ready to burn. It's not like you have wood that's, that's seasoned or not seasoned, none of that stuff. You get a bag of pellets, a good one, and it's ready to roll. You can go down there and you can get one bag, right? Or you can get 50 bags. Try getting five pieces of wood. What is it gonna cost you? Seven bucks at, at, the, at the supermarket. You don't wanna do that. It's, you, you need to get deliveries usually of, of, of wood. Now you can go and you can pick it up, but it usually you have to get a quart of wood. You can't just go and get a few, uh, a, a few logs. So it's simpler. It keeps temperature. Now, another thing is, is that some people don't like that it makes a noise. It does. It's got a fan on it. A lot of these modern, most of the modern wood stoves nowadays have fans. So you're not going to get away from that. You can turn it off probably, but they're designed to work with the fan, those modern ones. Older ones, of course, they're not going to have a fan. Sometimes you see people who have that fan that sits on top that just works by heat and it doesn't need to be plugged in. That's really cool. The, but yeah, it does make a little noise. I don't mind it, personally. You can control the temperature and it's just, it starts up every time. You don't have to worry about getting it started. You don't have to worry about having kindling. You don't need that. You don't need that. You don't need a big box of kindling. Also, cleaning this thing out, a lot of people say, oh, you gotta clean it out every day. This thing, you don't have to clean this thing out every day. If you're using a good pellet, I mean, three weeks, two, three weeks, for sure two weeks, probably three weeks it takes for this thing to fill up. It's, this thing, I'll open it up right now. That, that gets filled up, and then it gets filled up on the sides. I'll show you a close up of that. But you say to yourself, oh, that's not much ash. Well, it doesn't make much ash. It doesn't. This thing is awesome. Glass always stays clean. Now, that could be also another byproduct of buying good pellets. But Windex, I mean, I could not clean it for two weeks. Just spray a little Windex on there and wipe it right off. Perfect every single time. So simple. And let's get this thing going. I'll bring you over and I'll show you how this thing works. It's a simple, simple piece of equipment. It really is. There's not much to it. Here's the control pad right here. This is on off, meaning it starts and stops the pellet stove. Uh, this is like to lock your settings. This is a timer. I think this is like some sort of recirculation type thing. And then there's a whole bunch of menus and stuff. I keep it on the temperature setting. That means that you can say, set the desired temp you want in the room. And it will heat the room until it reaches that temp and then drop it down to one, you know, um, level one fan. The fan has to go. It can't shut the fan off. So it's always going to have fan because it's always got to exhaust the hot air. And that little piece right there hanging out, that's the temperature sensor. So let's hit this button. Here's the pellets. Also, if you don't have this, if you have this thing open and this button is not per, uh, pressed, it'll stop, stop the unit. Now we're gonna take a look at the back here. As it starts going, this is the motor for the auger. So this turns, and you'll be able to know if it's turning, obviously from the pellets dropping, but also you're gonna see this right there spin. And there's also a little 
Allen key bolt right there, and that's a tensioner. Now starting this thing up without the back on it, it can be a little dangerous because of this ribbon cable right here. You don't want this ribbon cable to touch something that's really hot and melt, because then you got a real problem. So it's dropping pellets now. I got that thing out of the way. See it spinning? And maybe you can even hear the motor. And while we're here and waiting for this, I'll explain. This is the exhaust. It's already going. There's air coming out of here, but it's cold. This is going to exhaust the smoke. This is a very small pipe. Another great thing about a pellet stove is, is that it's a very small pipe. And you can save a ton of money on the pipe for a pellet stove than you would for a wood stove. Those things can be more than the wood stove. It could be a thousand dollars. Pipe setup usually for a pellet stove is mm, a couple hundred bucks. This right here is the intake. This pulls air in. This is the computer that controls everything. And that's why this ribbon cable goes up to that controller. And that's it. And here's the fan for what the heat comes out of the front. That fan right there. You can see it from this side as well. See that? And that's not going to go until the unit starts to heat up. Now you can see the spark shooting out. Yep, here's the flame going. And you wouldn't believe how big the flame is for this. You know, some people say, yeah, but I, I, you know, I like that big flame from a wood stove. Well, uh, I can tell you this, that you're going to get the, you're going to get almost as big of a flame. Obviously, you put more wood in, you're going to get a bigger flame, but this is pretty darn good. Now, since the, since it started, it starts blowing smoke out. Now, I'm going to put this fan on so we don't totally contaminate the shop with, with uh, pellet smoke. I'll just put it on the low setting. I got this my little contraption here to hold the ribbon cable away. Now you can see here it says ignite. And all these symbols mean something too. See that first one is the ignite symbol. This is a fan symbol, so it's exhausting. And this says, and this means it's dropping pellets. So since I pressed the button till now, it's been about four minutes. But I haven't had to do anything. That's another great thing. Now, once it started going, you can see there's no more smoke left. And it burns real clean when it's not starting the flame. When it's just keeping the flame going, it burns extremely clean. So just a little bit of smoke there. Now it's heating up the box right now. That's what it's doing. It's getting the box up to temp so that it can start the fan and the fan comes out of here, right there. Now look at, look at that flame right there. Even in, with, this, with this terrible glare, it's still pretty big probably on the screen. In person, it's, it's over 12 inches high. Now, this hasn't started to heat up the area yet, meaning the fan hasn't started going yet. It's still heating up the box. The side, that is hot. That's very, very hot. Now that, you could burn yourself on that, so you gotta be careful. Now, now the fan's on and it's blowing hot air. And it's still dropping pellets, which is great. <laughs> and it says here, heating. And then you can see that. That's the blower. And it's dropping pellets. And it ha it's, the ignition is over. See, that's gone now. Now let's look down here. 
and you could probably tell that's the motor right there going. That's actually, I think, the fan to cool the motor, to be honest with you, actually. And, um, but on the inside of this is the fan that blows out the exhaust. And you can also see that's moving there. And that is the fan that blows the air out the front. Now, just by knowing all this, you can really diagnose, it's, it's a very simple system. You can really diagnose the issues here. Now, obviously, if it's a computer issue, it's difficult to know if it's a computer issue or some other issue. But if you hit that on button and that motor doesn't start going, well, then it's it, most likely it's a motor issue. But let's say you the motor's going and it's spinning, but the pellets aren't coming out. Well, maybe it's that little that little Allen key set screw that I pointed out before. Yeah, or maybe <laughs> you don't have any pellets in there. <laughs> now you got to check out. But other than that, I mean, there's not, and maybe the whole thing starts going and this fan never turns on. Well, maybe you got a, you got a motor problem in this fan. But other than that, that's really it. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, really a simple, simple piece of equipment. And this thing has been great for me. I can't say enough good things about this. It's, it's been, it's really been incredible. And I think I paid a thousand bucks for this thing. A thousand dollars plus the pipe. So about 1200 bucks, 1250 bucks. And right now I, they're more expensive. Like if you go to Home Depot, I think this thing is like $1,600 because it's September and I, I believe they raised the prices. But if you went and bought it in April, it'll be cheaper, I think. But you can get them in other places. Ace Hardware is one that always keeps these things and right now i believe so late september it's twelve hundred dollars now you can find them also on the internet for high 900s from just companies that you've never heard of but if you want to go to a named company like home depot ace hardware and probably others you're going to look to spend at least a thousand dollars but that is way worth it as far as i'm concerned a good a good wood stove is going to cost you that and then it's going to cost you another thousand bucks for the pipe okay well I tell you, I can't recommend this pellet stove enough. It's been absolutely great for me. It only has one annoying issue. If you understand it and you know how to fix it, it uh, it's, it's not that bad. But I think it definitely confuses some people. When the pellets get low in this thing, the auger, the weight, there's not enough weight to allow the auger to release the pellets. What happens then is, is that the box starts to cool down and it starts to blow cold air and then it'll end up just shutting down. There's like, okay, it needs more pellets and it just shuts down. And it, that can be really annoying because the way the system works is, is that it wants you to wait 30 minutes before you start it again. So it wants to cool down, it wants to reset. Technically speaking, you probably don't need to do that. You can unplug it, plug it back in. But I don't, I don't, I don't usually do that if I have that problem. What I do is, is that once I catch it, if I, if I realize, oh, this thing is run out of pellets, and the way you know is, is that the fan's on like five <laughs> and you don't see any flame, you open up this thing, you stick your hand down in there, and you push a bunch of pellets into the hole. That creates enough weight where it drops pellets in there. It starts a flame going. That'll save it, and then you put more pellets in. Do not just try and dump pellets in. It won't work. It won't work. You got to push them in by hand. Once you get the flame going, dump the pellets in. That's the, um, that's the only issue with this. And some people don't like that the hopper is not big enough to hold a full 40 pound bag. It is technically, the problem is you're never filling it up when it's like completely empty. That's, that's the confusion. Also, it's probably only big enough for a 40 pound hardwood bag, not a softwood, because obviously, as we know, there's more pellets in the softwood, right? So that, some people don't like that. I don't mind it. This thing on a full thing of pellets, I don't run it at night. I do not run these at night. I just run them from the morning till say eight, nine o'clock. Then I turn them off when I go to bed because we don't heat our bedrooms with these. Uh, with a pellet stove. We heat a living room, kitchen, dining room with this one. And actually I have a second one, which I never pointed out, is that maybe 
four years into this into this one, I said, this thing is great. I'm buying another one. I bought another one and put it on the first floor. So it's like our guest floor area. So that heats up that. That's like over a thousand square feet. And then it's over a thousand square feet for the, the living room, the kitchen, and the dining room. This is rated to 1500 square feet. I would say if you have high ceilings like I do, I have all cathedral ceilings and I like it warm. Uh, I would say 1100 is kind of like the max. 1200 that's yeah you start getting into 1500 square feet with really high ceilings and if you like it really warm it may not do the job it's more it's it's definitely a small pallet stove for a small area but 1500 square feet if you have normal ceilings it's, that's totally completely fine there's days that i just need to turn it off because it's just too too darn hot truly even when it's cold outside i'm talking below freezing now this thing is very powerful. It's so simple to use too. I don't have to worry about anything. I just turn it on and it goes. Going on to my seventh season for a thousand dollars plus 250 bucks in pipe, you can't beat it. All right, everyone, thanks.